Good morning, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to World This Morning. I'm your host Rida Shah for today and you might be wondering where Shiza and Shahzad are, your everyday host, but they had some work to do so I'm filling in up for them. I hope I match their energy but believe me the content I have is amazing. So first let's talk about the weather. The weather in Islamabad is cold and chilly but it's great for all of you to go out with your friends and family, have a cup of tea, have pakoras, have samosas and enjoy enjoy the weather but apart from Islamabad the weather in the northern areas of the country have experienced uh, snowfall and uh, it's a little dangerous to go up the mountains for now so all of our viewers we advise you to stay safe and uh, listen to the um, uh, reports and the progress made by the traffic police and uh, be careful while traveling on motorway as well as because uh, dense fog is expected there as well and and you know that today we will be talking about a very interesting topic that is of artificial intelligence. Yes, of course, artificial intelligence is the breakthrough of the 21st century and we will be talking about it in length with our guests for today. And uh, the whole aspect of artificial intelligence will be discussed in light of uh, national security and hybrid warfare that is being uh, is happening in today's world. So first of all, a little bit about artificial intelligence is that artificial intelligence is a theory and development of computer sciences in order to replicate the uh, processing of, uh, hum uh, of a machine with human brain. Yes, of course, this is the future where machines will start acting like a human brain and will start, um, and the initial steps of that is face recognition and um, so much more. So for more details, and I'll be introducing guests after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back to this beautiful morning with me, Rida Shah and Ehman Nawaz and we were talking about artificial intelligence. So as I was telling you that in everyday life we experience artificial intelligence in almost everything we do. If we go up to Google and search something, the best results that come to you is because of artificial intelligence. The, uh, when you talk to your phone, Siri or Alexa, you talk to them and they recognize your voice. That is part of artificial intelligence. And sometimes you don't even have to search. I think you're thinking about something. Exactly. Like the other day I was thinking, 
uh, a bit about planes and their working after we had that Ukrainian airplane crash and automatically all I had was airplane related stuff. So a bit freaky, but I think that's the magic of science, that isn't it? That is the future, Ahmed, yes. And now we'll be talking, as um, a conference is being held tomorrow in a Serena Hotel that is being organized by COPAIR, Center of Pakistan and International Relations. And uh, the topic of this conference is artificial intelligence and its implications on hybrid warfare and national security. So to discuss more about this and to know more about artificial intelligence and its impact on uh, national security and hybrid warfare. We and have, our lives. And <laughs> our lives in general. We have with us our guests, Ms. Amna Malik, who is the president of COPAIR, Center of Pakistan and International Relations, which is a strategic think tank working on various global issues and policy advocacy. She has achieved a number of awards, both on national and international platforms. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> and now we have with us uh, Dr. Saad Baloch, who is an entrepreneur and international coordinator for Center for Artificial Intelligence and also does international collaborations for Copair on artificial intelligence. Thank you so much for taking time yeah. out for Good us. Good morning, morning to you too as well. <laughs> right, uh, I think, uh, ma'am, let's start with you. I think a basic brief of the organization is very important for the viewers because we understand, for my understanding, please correct me if I am wrong, that this is the very first event of its kind that is being held in Pakistan mm. through our glorious history. We've achieved so much. Uh, there are countless things that we need to be proud of, but artificial intelligence, we've been a bit behind, haven't we? Mm, yes, uh, I believe so. Uh, let me introduce uh, my organization. Uh, uh, Center of Pakistan and International Relations is a strategic think tank working on various global issues and we try to do the policy advocacy and try to recommend uh, certain policies to the government of Pakistan and uh, we worked on youth and women economic empowerment especially their empowerment through information technology Copair uh, worked with U UNAPCICT it is a, a United Nations Institute on Information Technology we launched Wi-Fi uh, and I spoke at the UN forum mm -hmm. so uh, Copair always emphasized that it's very important to work on information technology uh, Three years back, uh, we launched a project, uh, E-Women, Empowering Women Through Information Technology, and we highlighted that women can improve their business using Facebook and mm. other uh, e-commerce websites, and we did a number of trainings and mentoring on this. Then we also uh, launched another project, Startup Pakistan, uh, with the collaboration of Global Entrepreneurial Network. Global Entrepreneurial uh, Network uh, launched uh, Startup Turkey, they also st uh, launched Startup uh, India. So we are also the advocates that Startup Pakistan should be launched. Alhamdulillah, uh, the Prime Minister of Pakistan really liked the idea, Imran Khan Saab, because he is uh, the leader of the youth. Yes. So they accepted the project and mm. uh, the project is in the pipeline and we are very happy that copia recommendations are accepted by the government. And there we mentioned that uh, the kids should be involved in the future technologies. They should understand the technologies. There should be incubation centers in the university. You make a very valid yes. point, ma'am, because Rita, I, I think the problem that we're facing right now in society is that there are two sets of people. One mm -hmm. of them are which are strictly against children, uh, you know, getting used to technology at a very young age, while mm -hmm. I'm completely opposite. I think there are certain elements that you need to be aware of limiting the time if you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, because I believe yeah. that in today's age, if you hand over a mobile phone to a kid, a two-year-old kid, mm -hmm. they get a hang of it so quickly that they know where the YouTube is, how to play Coco Melon and everything <laughs> like that. You so, just made my daughter's day, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> exactly. So the kids these days, they are very fast and they yeah. have intellectual prowess more than we do mm -hmm. at our age. Let's, let's, so I believe uh, it is very important. It, it is, to, but uh, do you? what's your thought on this? Let, let me just pose it to you. Do you think, can you keep them away or should you just let them blend in? I think, uh, what do you say, Miana Ravi. <laughs> 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 What's the word for that in English? In keep terms of technology? Yeah. Matlab, keep a balance be, between technology balance and a human life. Exactly. Think, so. Do not let it overtake your life and, you know, indulge yourself completely in it. But also, it's very important. It's the need of the hour. You need to be acquainted with the latest yeah. technology. Doc Saad, do you agree? Um, I totally agree, actually. Um, to be honest, 
if we see AI and artificial intelligence, is basically your interaction between people and technology nowadays. And uh, to be honest, there's hardly a chance you can stay away from technology. Uh, I come from UK and mm -hmm. I've been involved with AI and uh, machine learning for quite a time. And with that, I've been involved with uh, Copair as well as an international relation coordinator um, for promoting the stuff which Pakistan, which eventually is coming to an AI system now, which is really good to hear about it. And uh, what I believe is that in future, we can promote Pakistan really well in terms of AI. And uh, our youth, definitely, which I'm representing because I'm part of it, um, I think that we are the ones who are the future of Pakistan and we should be involved equally into the future of Pakistan. Yeah, everybody has a part to play. I, actually, I think the misunderstanding of artificial intelligence goes back to the time when the Terminator was being launched. Everybody <laughs> became so afraid of okay. machines yeah. that yeah. it became only Skynet and Terminator as the artificial intelligence. Hey, I'm still afraid of machines. <laughs> I think, think they will take over? take over the world <laughs> so, one day. <laughs> maybe so. they have. Maybe you don't know. This is not a real person. You never know. This might yeah. be a robot. <laughs> but uh, you've been traveling, Rida, as well. You've mm -hmm. uh, witnessed uh, a big difference between our country and other countries in mm. terms of artificial intelligence, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have and that is what we need these people for because we need to, these people to make policy so that the government can implement them on a national platform. Mm. So to talk more on this, what role do you think the government can play in order to include artificial intelligence in our daily lives? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, why we are organizing this conference and there are many other organizations which are working on it because research and development on artificial intelligence is very important and we yes, need to see the comparative analysis of Pakistan with the rest of the world that what an India is doing, what China is doing, what US is doing, what mm. Russia is doing. So it's uh, artificial intelligence is not a tool mm. for the uh, stronger nation, it's also a tool can be ut utilized by the weaker nation. As you mentioned, that it can be a curse because, and it can be a solution as well. Yeah. So this national uh, conference on artificial intelligence and there are certain other organizations which are also working in Pakistan that to emphasize the government, like uh, digitalization of Pakistan, like it's very important. In the similar manner for the national security, we mm -hmm. face this hybrid warfare, these cyber security threats. Uh, if you remember the example of Bank Islami, uh, they had the cyber th attack. Mm. And uh, so, you know, we need to address these issues. And uh, we as a think tank can only recommend. Mm. And then it's uh, the decision of the government maker mm. and the policy makers and the legislatures that how they adopt it. Like UAE, uh, I give you an example, they realized that this is something very important. So they opened up a separate ministry for that. Right. Similarly, in different defense uh, organization, uh, they establish a separate department of AI. Mm. So uh, why we establish the center of artificial intelligence? Because it's a vast field. It's not like, like uh, we are just stimulating the human intelligence, but we are, in, in fact, disturbing the political, economic, and media side of the society or in, of any country. And through this, you know, uh, the non, if you talk about the hybrid warfare, so we involve the non-state actors. Mm -hmm. So we are penetrating into any countries mm -hmm. uh, and disturb the sovereignty of Pakistan. So I think uh, and Pakistan... And this has been happening in the... Yes, in and the this is time. happening. So I think the government of Pakistan our defense forces, they are working on different kind of strategies. So we are just uh, playing a smaller role in that. We believe that the new student, the students of the different universities, the executives, the corporate, they should be given some kind of mentoring, training, mm, workshops and relation, uh, realization of, uh, and also for the policy advocates. Because policy advocates are going to, you know, advocate this in the parliament. So that's right. also yes. very important. You said a small uh, uh, role that you're playing, but I think the probably the most important Important one important because I think the most important thing is just to break those barriers, get away from and the, those get taboos. Get people talking about this, yeah. get the government aware that this is a pressing issue and we need to do something about this. Definitely. So talking about Center for Inter uh, Artificial Intelligence that uh, your COPIR is planning on uh, establishing in Pakistan, so what kind of mentoring and training will be provided in that center for the upcoming youth? Uh, well, if you look at the youth, um, in Pakistan, basically, there's 65% of the youth, which is from the age of 20 to 35. And uh, I was quite shocked for the latest surveys in Pakistan. The last year, about 500,000 graduates 
were unemployed by the end of the year. That is an immense amount of people who have done their work, have <coughs> done hard work, but haven't got any way to go. And I think that is the place where I, AI comes in and they can help them to promote and get those jobs. Um, they can still work at home, stay at home, earn money. Um, so that is the gap which it creates uh, in, the, in, the, in, in that department. Uh, in terms of the international relations, uh, we will be liking to promote Pakistan as an upcoming face of AI and improve uh, whatever technology we have to show it to the world that we are not behind of anywhere else. Um, although, as you said already, that people uh, abroad have already progressed mm. into AI. They have mm -hmm. been using it for quite a while now. And uh, that's true. AI has been there for quite a while. And uh, to be honest, I am from UK and over there you see from going to shopping in the supermarket, all the way down to your national development, um, your national policies. They've been all made and they have an influence of AI in some way or another. Uh, your recent elections, you can see your Brexit, everything involves and it revolves around uh, social media, which pops up your, um, your thinking behind what yeah. kind of voting opinion making, opinion now. making yeah. is the way. Uh, so that is all role of AI into mm -hmm. your d daily life, which you don't even know it. Um, and that's why I believe AI is something which has always been there. Uh, it's been an invisible thing, but it has always been there since the beginning of the technology and the evolution of technology. Yeah, yeah. Alan Turing uh, yeah. uh, brought this question up, can machines think? Mm. So artificial intelligence is basically that phenomena that machines will start thinking one day uh, and so make decisions yeah, and not take orders <laughs> from you. So, uh, Doc do, Saad, you know, it, to put it in clear words, he basically said that machines have already been controlling us, you know, so uh, <laughs> that, that time is here that Rida was swearing. Ma'am, I must ask you something very, very uh, important at this stage. Imperative that we understand the hurdles that are involved in such a kind of a system or changing that kind of a scenario because we know that as a country we've, we've lacked in information technology. The addition or the introduction of 3G, 4G services in Pakistan was too late. Now they're testing 5G. Hopefully it comes out in a year or so. Uh, I had a chance to talk to the former finance minister, who's now the minister for uh, development, that is Asad Umar. He said that we tried so hard just to take Pakistan to a cashless economy with PayPal and with everything that is there. Cryptocurrency. Yeah, cryptocurrency, that is happening. But unfortunately, we do have certain hurdles that basically slow down the process for a country like Pakistan to bring in artificial intelligence. Uh, well, uh, there are always uh, positive and negative points of everything. So, if we talk about, uh, you know, uh, getting the technology from any other country, mm -hmm. we need to see the different aspects. That's mm -hmm. very important. Uh, and I believe what we are uh, projecting that we should work on our indigenous solutions. Mm -hmm. And we all know that our privacy is... Uh, uh, you know, exposed and uh, through AI and through other uh, hybrid warfare methods. So uh, this is very important that we need to work on the solutions as well. Uh, but I, I believe so uh, that it's not like uh, 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 the government is working on a different kind. They, they have a national security advisor recently they appointed yes. it. So I believe, uh, I told you that government is realizing they are also uh, working on different aspects and we are also proposing in this national conference on AI that there should be a national strategy on artificial intelligence, how it's, it can uh, help in uh, foreign policy, how it can help in hybrid warfare But what challenges solutions. do you see, ma'am? What challenges do you see? There are many challenges because it's not like in one day you adopt the policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about blockchain, cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. It's not like that you, you just adopt it. Mm -hmm. There are, you need to work on the customized solution according to the requirement of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that is very important, so that, that how you do it. Mm -hmm. Then you have to work on your cyber secure, uh, safety. If let's suppose if you uh, get some software or some technology some innovative technology from uh, foreign market so then you are also exposing your data yeah. because artificial intelligence food is like uh, data mm -hmm. like for humans uh, you it's, food. it's <laughs> your f uh, for you food is your how you live yes. so for AI data is something which is very mm -hmm. important so if you expose your data 
uh, to anyone. So you need to again work that whether it will disrupt your political system, it disrupt your economic system. You, we just think like, uh, you know, let's talk about social media. Nobody check the authenticity of the news yes, and they believe in the fake news. Mm -hmm. And this is a, uh, and you know, uh, and they can change the trend. They can tra change the uh, p political scenario during the election. They can change anything. Mm. So I believe that uh, uh, s uh, similarly on the cyber laws, the government need to revise for the work on that. And there should be certain organizations like for cyber security. Uh, I work with FIA. Mm -hmm. So their cyber security wing requires a lot of fundings. So we are collaborating with different institutes and we are suggesting that th there is a long way to go. Definitely. There's but a so, long so way cyber to go. crime is a genuine threat. I think mm -hmm. uh, most of us realize and know people who have been targeted through cyber crime. But as if ma'am, because she mentioned it as well, I think the FIA's cyber crime wing is doing a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah, they recently they, they really passed are. a bill to cyber yeah. security bill and everything like that. But if we talk about the social media platforms, because mm -hmm. they are very receptive to hybrid warfare. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Saad, what steps can a common man take in order to not be part of the hybrid warfare that is taking place? Because, you know, we get a message, we read it, we believe it. So uh, what is an alternative in that respect? Um, well, knowledge is key. That's the whole point, mm. I think, in, t in terms of uh, whatever information you get from any source. Uh, the first show you should be is to go out there and see if the authenticity of that source. What that is the source, source of that story? Exactly, because that is what it tells you where the information is coming from. Um, and if you only see at one place, that means that there is something which is not right. Uh, for example, if you see something about your national concern or something has happened in some part of the country, and if it's only on your phone but you don't see it on social media or anywhere else, um, not even your own channels are promoting any kind of a news like that. So that tells you and it rings an alarm saying there is something wrong with this kind of information. And I personally believe that everybody should do that before sending an information out to anybody. Um, in terms of AI itself, it is a software which helps you to eliminate the amount of risks and remove the amount of errors which we have mm. made in the past because obviously, as Ma'am said already, that um, artificial intelligence uses your data. And when we talk about national security, obviously we cannot give our data for, to somebody else mm. to promote and tell us what is wrong with it or what we have done wrong without it. Um, so that is the need of having into artificial intelligence into our own system. Indigenous and artificial intelligence. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, the hybrid warfare, because the new warfare is different to what we mm. think in the past has been always there. Uh, they are not people who fight the wars anymore. They are the cyber wars which happen these days. Keyboard warriors, exactly. Are basically. <laughs> exactly. And uh, there is so much we expose ourselves when we are on the daily social media. Um, so I think we should check our authenticity when we are posting something or even taking it out and promoting it to somewhere else. Definitely. And since we're talking so much about artificial intelligence and all the gizmos and gadgets that are out there, I think uh, it's time now to give our viewers a bit of fun at the same time as well. There is a movie that is there, it's called Code 8, and we're gonna make you look at the trailer and then of course let us know in your comments once you write to us, what do you think of artificial intelligence? Let's take a look. Whoa, any second thoughts about artificial intelligence now? <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's not as scary as it seems. We do not want to scare our viewers off from artificial intelligence. It's the future you should get a grip on the know-hows of artificial Maybe intelligence. Maybe our viewers are AIs as well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we'll be talking a little bit about the conference that is taking place tomorrow and who the speakers will be. So Ma'am Amna, if you can highlight uh, the topics that will be discussed tomorrow and the speakers that will be participating and any of the government officials will be present there. Uh, yes, uh, we are thankful uh, that the uh, pr uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Special Advisor on Artificial Intelligence Dr. Atau Rahman is going to grace the occasion. And other than that, uh, there are uh, many other speakers who, who are an expert in their fields. Uh, <coughs> we requested uh, General Khalid Dodi uh, to talk about hybrid warfare, mm. national securities, 
and then we requested Dr. Zafar Jaspal. Uh, he is uh, talking about uh, uh, what uh, uh, what should be the new warfare strategy, mm. uh, and how AI can be implemented on on that. Uh, then we are having uh, Amar Jafri Saab, who is going to talk about cyber security. And uh, then we have uh, one representation of Dr. Zainul Abedin from Higher Education Commission that how education can play its role. Then we also invited certain other uh, experts on AI, Dr. Khuram. <coughs> he is talking about the role of uh, digital media, how AI can implement its role, how we can work on early warning systems uh, on digital media, cyber safety, things like that. And finally, <coughs> we are thankful that uh, Dr. Sajid Baloch uh, and certain other scientists who are the national heroes uh, like Dr. Samar Mubarak, they are coming and uh, they are giving certain recommendation and giving the detailed overview of artificial intelligence mm. that how it uh, change uh, our lives, not only the political platform, economic, social media, uh, different aspects they are going to discuss. And uh, finally, uh, it will be uh, graced by the Minister of Science and Technology, Chaudhary Fawad. And I believe that uh, there is going to be a good representation of the civil society, defense forces, government officials, and academia. So uh, we, would, uh, we are encouraging everyone so that we develop an AI network. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we invited the students who are doing PhD in AI. Uh, and a few of international speakers who are going to join later on in the center mm -hmm. of artificial intelligence, they are uh, giving their video messages. Oh, That's yeah, very that encouraging. Is, yeah, that is yeah. so encouraging. Uh, so many things happening. Dr. Saab, let's, let's see the progress of it now. Uh, we see, let's accept it. Things are changing now. Pakistan is close to documenting its economy. Digital mapping is taking place. Uh, there's a lot of awareness in terms of technology now. How do you see the future for Pakistan in artificial intelligence, especially because you are representing the youth as well, their potential in this? No, definitely, like you've said, uh, Pakistan has got really a lot of potential. Uh, not only the youth are great scientists, the ones who have prepared, uh, their, and they, have, they are really busy people anyways, but they have got um, their importance is, and they know that this is the importance of Pakistan to, for, to move forward. This is what they have to do. Uh, in order to bring Pakistan forward. Uh, and I think uh, being abroad, um, it opens up the, uh, the open area for me to promote Pakistanis and mm. Pakistani youth out there as well. Um, there are a lot of people who are out there which are um, enthusiastic about Pakistan. <coughs> uh, we are connected with our roots. Uh, and me being here represent that. Uh, we want to be part of bringing Pakistan and bringing Pakistan name forward as well. And uh, not only in it artificial intelligence, Anyways, it's, mm. it's the thing which we want to promote anyways. Um, but yeah, th like you said, uh, AI is the future. Uh, the world is already there. And uh, to keep up with the world, uh, this is something which we need to go forward with. Definitely, yes. Yes, and I would like to add that on behalf of the entire nation, we would like to thank people yeah. like you <laughs> who are coming back to Pakistan and investing in a sector that is so important right now, artificial intelligence, the development in this area is so important. So your role in development of this country is very essential and I would personally thank you for that. Yeah, no, because you. And the priceless you experience you're bringing, that's very exactly. important because for a developed country like United Kingdom, with a lot of resources, with mm. everything that is there, bringing that amount of experience back to the country. I think we always talk about that knowledge is best when it's shared. So I think that is the real way forward. But definitely, I think a lot of things have changed now. Uh, I have known certain fields of studies that I didn't know before, like mechatronics. Uh, you've got robotics now being taught uh, mm. separately as well at the same time as well. So because, ma'am, you mentioned a bit about the, how the education sector can play a role as well. Uh, would you see that certain things are working in the favor of promoting this artificial intelligence? Well, uh, when this new government came into power, it's uh, very encouraging that the president of Pakistan uh, uh, announced scholarship for students on, uh, for AI. Yes, ma'am. Then uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan uh, engaged Dr. Atau Rahman and, uh, to work on AI centers and different think tanks and private organizations are also working. 
And in institute, there are th three or four uh, important uh, universities who developed also their AI centers. Like there was a department of IT, but there is a separate department of AI. AI. Because there are different fields of AI, like machine learning, data, data mining, uh, algorithm, different areas. So uh, uh, it requires a comprehensive plan. So, and uh, like I think in future there will be a separate ministry of AI. Should be, ma'am. It should, should be. be. It should be. In it the should near be. future. In the should near be. future. It should yes. Be. It should be. And the way uh, things are expanding, I think that's very important yes. to have uh, one individual um, as the advisor of the prime minister on artificial intelligence already speaks volume mm -hmm. of how serious the government is, and definitely a ministry would be more dedicated to the cause as well because there is a lot involved, isn't it, Rida? Uh, especially the financial factors. Exactly, but uh, you know, with that, we need to develop the trust of people mm -hmm. to trust, uh, to put, like Ma'am Amna mentioned that, you know, I, I'm also very hesitant when uh, I have to put my credit card or debit card number online because there are scams and everything like that. Yeah. So with that, with artificial intelligence, there comes a whole new era of responsibilities and all new legislation that has to be done in order to ensure the right kind of AI in, in the country. And it stays in the right hands as well, doesn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not only that we are talking about the government. Yes. Like in the corporate sector, there is going to be a revolution. We mm. talked about FinTech, we talk about the project management based on AI. Even the media is going to be based on AI. So, mm. you know, everything, it's very important that uh, rather than our youth is going to be jobless because, you know, we are having a youth world. We need to develop, we need to work on the engagement of youth, their skill development. But this is also very important to compete to the international market. Mm -hmm. We need to work on the latest technology, future technologies, so that our youth should not be far behind. So AI is very important and I want to emphasize that parents should look at, into it mm -hmm. because AI is going to be involved in the health sector, in the education sector, in the business sector. So everywhere. Who, you everywhere, think even in the employment side. Mm -hmm. So people will say that uh, do you have any command on it do you yeah. have any idea so it's better that the small certification uh, lo long certification proper educational uh, degrees they are very important and then they should see that where the world is going Definitely. so we have to compete with the world mm. yeah. so dr saad you've been uh, you're coming from a country that yeah. knows where the world is going mm -hmm. we're knowing it gradually yeah. uh, what things have you seen there that you would definitely s say could work for Pakistan as well? Um, just to give you an idea of how AI is important to the other part of the world as well, uh, if you look at the Economic Forum uh, uh, legislations and their uh, recent surveys, um, it is about 58 million new jobs are going to be created in AI by the end of 2022. Uh, so that's in two years' time, there are going to be more than 58 million jobs all over the world and that's just in AI, um, which tells you that world is actually looking into AI already. Um, and we don't want to be back and behind in that part. Mm -hmm. um, we should be, and I think this is, um, like ma'am said, the emphasis should be that this is the right time to get on board with AI uh, because it can create wonders. Um, and it can tell different, how the difference world is looking at. Um, so yeah, I believe, uh, looking from the outer perspective, um, looking back to Pakistan, um, we have got a lot of potential. Uh, our, our youth is encouraged. We, like you were saying at the beginning of the show, uh, if you ask a kid already, he knows how to use an, uh, yeah. use an app, use a mobile phone, tablet, uh, which, is, which is really essential. And that means that the world is moving along with the technology. Um, if you ask our elder people, you will still find people in Pakistan and even abroad uh, that who who cannot use technology as efficient as <coughs> our people and our kids nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, like Mam said, it's really uh, important to give our kids uh, in the younger generation uh, and get them involved in AI as soon as possible. At grassroots levels. At, at, at school levels, yeah. obviously. Um, so that from the young age, their minds are developed into learning how to coding and uh, how how they can implement the new systems into uh, when they come into the age of building up stuff. Mm. Um, so that is really important. And I think we need to realize and celebrate all of those heroes like Rida. Definitely thank Dr. Saad and Ma'am as well for their role. 
that they're playing. I think because the first step, like we said, was eliminating that cliche and just getting people aware of it. That, like Rida said, get them talking about it. Yesterday, we also had uh, the anniversary of uh, Arfa Karim Randhawa, who was the youngest Microsoft specialist mm -hmm. at the age of just nine back in uh, back in the other decade as well. But you've got to consider the fact that there are certain people out there that are definitely involved with AI. You need to get your knowledge as well. But Rida, once again, uh, unfortunately short on time, mm. but I think the stress has to be that on the grassroots levels. I think Dr. Yes, Saab said uh, school levels. But I believe that we're talking about artificial intelligence in terms of hybrid warfare. Mm. So not be a party of that. If you receive a message, if you read news, check the sources, check who is sending you the, the message and you know, because not be a part of this hybrid warfare that is creating all this chaos and anarchy in the country. So it is our responsibility because we cannot pin everything to the government or the institutions or the uh, non-government organizations. It is our responsibility as citizens as well to verify the information that we're getting and spreading in return. So I believe this is the huge takeaway from today's episode. And this does happen oftenly. We, uh, a couple of days back, a child was reported that was found. Uh, the parents were found within 24 hours. But even after four days, people were sharing that news on social media. Yeah. And I was shocked. I said, please have some mercy on the parents. But we're going to leave it at that. Rida, you know there are certain platforms yeah. uh, that are going to be waiting. And the conference is going to be there. And I think all of you have got a chance. You've got to go there. Just listen to what the speakers have to say. Make your opinion about this. Ma'am, thank you so much. And uh, thank Dr. You. Saab, thank you so much mm -hmm. as well. I think you uh, are doing the country <laughs> proud. And we're all mm -hmm. very, very uh, honored to have you on the show. Uh, talking about the subject and obviously a great service to Pakistan. Thank, thank you so thank much. You much. We're going to leave it at that and obviously it is going to announce we have some social media platforms where they can find us. Really? And they are artificial <laughs> intelligence as well. You've got Facebook, YouTube, Twitter on your screens right now. You can also catch us on Daily Motion. The repeat is also going to be on PTV World and obviously you can write to us as well. The repeat is going to be at 11.05 and we're going to catch you very soon as well. With your regular hosts, definitely. <laughs> I think it's a shout out to them as well. Hope yeah. they get back very soon. I Hats hope off. we uh, did justice to their position here. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, there was there's always artificial intelligence to replace us. We don't mind. Yeah. You can replace <laughs> all of us. We're gonna leave it at that. From me and Rida, one, two, three. We're gonna say good, good morning. morning.